Welcome to Jim Collins' classic, classic, classic. One of the best sellers of all times. Um, continues to be on the best seller list. Good to great. Good to great. How some companies go from being just good to being great while other companies don't. And if you summarize this book, if Jim Collins were to summarize this book in one word, in one word, it would all be about discipline. Discipline, discipline, discipline. That is the one word in this book. There are different kinds of discipline he talks about and we'll go into a lot more detail. But if there's one takeaway from this book, it is discipline. He talks about three different kinds of discipline. Discipline of people, discipline of thought, and discipline of action. Now, as we go into the book, I'll explain more of what Jim is talking about in his masterpiece here. And uh, hopefully you'll, you'll get to appreciate where Jim is coming from. So, having said that, let's get started by the first discipline that Jim talks about. About all the disciplines is the discipline number one, which is the discipline of people. What kind of people do you have in the business will determine how successful the business is. And to get into more details, uh, Jim talks about the different kinds of leadership. Different kinds of leadership. If you think of uh, organizational hierarchy, the first, the most uh, lowest level of a leader is the highly capable individual. You go higher, it's a contributing team member. You go even higher, it's some competent manager. You go even higher, which is level four. This is the guy who makes it happen. He enables the pursuit of the vision. He motivates other people. But then there's a level five executive. He is focused on building greatness. Building greatness. And the key components of him, of his building greatness, are through humility, a fanatic drive, and intelligence and willpower. Again, a fanatic drive is that obsession, that almost madness to make it the great make it great to make that business not just good but great having said that now let's talk about the other concept the other concept of discipline of people which is first who then what first who then what so we don't just start by going with okay let's do this and then go pick out the right people well, what Jim is saying is first you have to get the right people in the organization and wrong people off from the organization and that is where you start and you have to be very very rigorous in your people decisions as they say the old adage hire slow hire slow fire fast which is the same thing he says when in doubt don't hire keep looking and the discipline number two is when you know you need to make a personal change, you need to act. Again, the same thing. When in, when you're hiring, you hire slow. When you fire, you fire fast. One of the important disciplines that Jim talks about is the idea is to put your best people on your biggest opportunities, not your biggest problems. And in this, on the same light, you never sell off your best people. You only sell off your biggest problems. When you sell off your biggest problems, you keep your best people with you. So, very important takeaways here, and probably the highest one is to put your best people on the biggest opportunities, not your biggest problems. That is the discipline of people. Again, I highly recommend you get this book and really get into the details. Jim Collins cites so many different examples of how this really, what this really means, the discipline of people and how to execute it. And he, he provides real life examples from all the different businesses who he has conducted case studies on. So highly recommend this book. The other discipline that Jim Collins talks about is the discipline of thought. And the discipline of thought is broken down into two components. One is confronting the brutal facts and then the hedgehog concept. We'll get into more of them in detail, but let's start with confronting the brutal facts. Now, confronting the brutal facts is, um, it's not 
so much about um, one great Herculean effort. That's what the media talks about all the time. The media is fascinated with the idea that one Herculean, one great effort uh, can result in great outcomes, which is not at all the case. Great results come from good decisions diligently executed and accumulated on top of one another. When it comes to um, confronting the brutal facts, we have to be able to create an environment where truth, where truth prevails, where truth prevails. So, creating an environment where you know that truth will be spoken. So, he provides four concepts in that area, first of which is to lead with questions, not answers. And the second is to use dialogue and debate, not coercion. The third is to conduct autops autopsies without blame game, without blaming people. Just try to get down into why something fails. And to build red flag mechanisms. It's, it's not always about how much information a company has or how quality the information is about turning that information into information that cannot be ignored as in turning that information into red flags that can be acted upon right away so overall these four concepts re lead to the creation of a climate where truth prevails and then Jim talks about a very beautiful concept uh, in my opinion called the Stockdale paradox which is which comes from Admiral Jim Stockdale who was a prisoner of war in Vietnam and what he talked about was the idea that the people the prisoners of war who really survived were not necessarily just the ones who were optimists but the ones who were who had the faith that they will prevail no matter what they will come out of this whole ordeal at the same time they were able to confront the most brutal facts as they were right there right then in that moment so that is the Stockdale paradox which is know that you will come out strong know that you will come out of this difficulty but also confront the brutal facts that exist today that is the, conf the overall idea of confronting the brutal facts and then again another discipline of thought uh, is the hedgehog concept the hedgehog concept is uh, is something when you contrast a fox to a hedgehog it becomes it comes to light a fox is scattered and diffused and it tries all these different things but it lacks consistency it sees the world in all its complexity however a hedgehog has piercing insight and it does not get bogged down by all the complexity it simplifies the world into a simple organizing idea and just executes and then so take away the complexity simplify the things simplify 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 and under the hedgehog concept there the, there is this concept of the three intersecting circles that is where you want to spend the most energy resources time of the company on and the three intersecting circles are what is it that the company is deeply passionate about what is it that you can be the best in the world at not what you want to be the best at what you can be the best at and what drives your economic engine so the intersection of it all three of these what are you deeply passionate about what you can be the best in the world at and what drives the economic engine what creates the money if you work if the company is working in the intersection of all three of passion of being the best and of uh, area where money can be created then it is highly likely that the company will be successful because it has got the focus it is now like a hedgehog simplified focused on one thing and making sure that that is what gets done so that is the discipline of thought which is confronting the brutal facts and then living with the hedgehog concept now, now let's move on to discipline of action discipline of action and what Jim talks about is again 
three kinds of disciplines as we started the book with discipline of people, discipline of thought, and then the discipline of action. And what in this, it's a rather simplistic concept, but it is all about discipline, which is getting down to the smallest level of details and just executing to the best you can executing to the best you can with ultimate discipline and he gives an example of a triathlete or a Ironman athlete who has immense discipline even though he eats he has spent 2000 or 3000 calories in the morning with his workout when he is eating he has immense discipline in his eating because every little bit counts every little bit counts Jim Collins calls this the rinsing your cottage cheese factor as in that athlete rinses out his cottage cheese of all the fat so that he gets the highest quality protein in his diet and that is what he um, that is his discipline his discipline of action and the other discipline of action that Jim talks about is to be able to stay in the intersection of the three circles as discussed in the hedgehog concept the intersection of three circles of passion and what you can be the best at and what drives your economic growth. What, what again Jim talks about is having the discipline to not get defocused. Most companies die not because of lack of opportunity but because of too much opportunity. So it is critical to have a stop doing list of not doing the things that you don't need to do and only doing the things that are the most important. Again, having the discipline to focus on what is the most important thing for the business right now. That is the discipline of action. And now um, what Jim talks about, the flywheel and the doom loop, um, a very very uh, interesting concept again tying it all together with discipline he gives the example of a giant flywheel if you want a giant 5000 pound steel flywheel to rotate what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to start pushing it one step at a time one step at a time and one step at a time you're gonna keep on doing it and keep on doing it and keep on doing it and you're gonna have to create momentum and as you create momentum as you keep running out running behind it and pushing it and pushing it pushing it at some point it catches speed and then it is almost unstoppable but if someone were to come to you and ask you hey man or hey how did you get this flywheel rotate so fast what was that one major push you gave or what was that one major thing you did you will not be able to answer it because there is no one major push there is no one major thing you kept on doing it 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 and finally it caught momentum and it went start going so fast that now you couldn't even stop it so the key here is the discipline of doing it every day of creating that momentum and understanding that no matter how big a single effort is it is just a very small fraction of the entire cumulative effect so you have to work with the entire cumulative effect and the other thing that Jim talks about is the doom loop how the failed companies do it which is they they start with this one grand idea one killer innovation one miracle moment when everything comes together just like when we were talking about getting a flywheel to rotate there is never that one great moment but that's what the failed ones believe that there is that one great moment when everything comes together when there is this one killer innovation and they stop trying to do the daily discipline they stop trying to create momentum they just go for one great breakthrough but that does not work a lot of the failed ones will go through misguided acquisitions in order to make this happen but and they will try to jump to breakthrough or through um, they'll try to make a leap without 
going through creation of momentum on the flywheel and it just does not happen like that so the key here again it comes down to discipline and consistency which is you have to maintain consistency over time <coughs> each push of the flywheel builds on all the previous thousands of pushes it's not like one giant push can make it all happen but if you push and if you continue to push in a consistent direction you will get momentum however if you push in one direction one way and in another direction another way and in another direction again the third day you will have no momentum and you will be stuck again Jim closes this idea with the same thing that we were talking about earlier which is the illusion of one miracle moment there are a lot of failed companies that think of this whole idea of going to greatness as one miracle moment one miracle moment but it just does not happen like that no matter how great the result the transformation never happens in one giant step there is no single defining action no grand program no amazing revolution no one breakthrough that defines the overhaul of a company it never is like that it's always one single step at a time it's cumulative step by step action by action decision by decision turn by turn of the flywheel that all add up to the amazing results and what Jim talks about again he gives the example of the media which is obsessed with the idea um, of overnight greatness so it will not cover a company until the flywheel has already turned a thousand rotations per it's already turning a thousand rotations per minute it's already turning very fast and at that moment we hear about it but it often skews our perception of what is really possible it gives us the illusion of an overnight success when there is no real concept of an overnight success so no matter how short or long a transformation takes it has the same pattern it is it accumulates momentum and it happens by turn by turn of the flywheel until it always happens by turn by turn of the flywheel as it leads to build up of momentum and finally to breakthrough so there you have it Jim Collins absolute classic highly recommend you get that book it, it has to be an it has to be on your bookshelf there is no question about it because there's so many great examples there's so many great stories in this book that really drive these concepts home the concepts of discipline of people discipline of thought and discipline of action hope you enjoyed it